What's going on guys? I hope you're all hanging in there alright as we've got 20 days until we're able to play this game. And while that's not a lot of time, I know the anticipation is killing a lot of us. Kinda odd that as we get closer to release, it's harder to wait for this game. But anyway, in my last video I mentioned that there were some smaller pieces of information that I could bring you guys in my videos, and then asked you guys to come forward if you were interested so I could see if there were a large number of you who wouldn't be bothered by me doing these smaller updates. This video here is a direct result to the overwhelming amount of you who turned up in the comments to say you are absolutely interested and to go for it. So I really hope you guys find this video worth your time and that I do this information some justice. And one final thing before we get into it. Thanks to the amount of support you guys have shown these videos, the channel's now over 5,000 subscribers. As a result of this, I'm really trying to find ways to create more value for all of you in an attempt to hopefully show you how much I appreciate what you guys have done for me, the videos, and the future of this channel. So, I'm currently working on a small project that will be available to you guys either next Tuesday or Thursday, which are the 9th and 11th of May, so definitely be on the lookout for my next video. I'm aiming for Tuesday the 9th, which I really think I'll make, but in the event that something comes up and I can't do it, the 11th is definitely the latest date. Just please don't get your hopes up that it's this huge or crazy impactful thing. It's really more or less just a small gift from me to all of you. And for those of you who genuinely just don't care about it at all, I'm sorry for making you sit through that. Let's get into the video. As you can all tell from the title of the video, I decided to take a small spin on the updates, and instead of just doing a dedicated video on each update, I'm including a few into a single video, and putting a bit of focus onto how they impact one area of gameplay, which is infinite loops. And I am aware that some of you out there will not be familiar with the term infinite loops, so I'm just going to give a quick explanation. While infinite loops are present in other games, I'm going to discuss how they work in this one. An infinite loop in Friday the 13th is essentially when a counselor gets themselves set up in such a way that Jason has no choice but to chase them around in circles as they go around an object. Since the counselors generally have higher agility or maneuverability around these small obstacles like fences, they can run around them quicker than Jason can. Now, unless a Jason was on point with his shifts in the beta, some counselors were able to keep Jason occupied and chasing them around in circles for minutes at a time. This wasn't fun to play for Jason or the counselor. This wasn't fun to watch as a viewer of a stream or as a player who died or escaped and then was maybe spectating the last player who was running Jason in an infinite loop. And while this wasn't necessarily a huge problem in the beta, it's interesting to see that a lot of the updates made significantly help to mitigate this problem. Asymmetrical multiplayer games like this are usually plagued by an infinite loop problem, and I'm not going to name any directly, but I'm sure a lot of you out there know at least one or two big name games that have this problem and still haven't even solved it. So it's interesting to see how the developers of this game have sort of solved the issue before the game is even released. And they also definitely deserve credit for doing it in such a way that just doesn't even seem like what they're doing is intended to solve this problem. It just happens to do that. Anyway, first up, we've got throwing knives. Throwing knives were not in the beta, but they showed up in gameplay videos shortly after the beta ended. Here you can see some gameplay of Part 6 Jason, which you guys have all decided to call Hunter Jason, as he chases down Counselor Chad with the aid of his throwing knives. Definitely worth mentioning, and this was just recently revealed to us, is that Part 6 Jason is actually the only Jason out of the playable 7 to start with throwing knives available. This Jason starts with 4 throwing knives in his inventory, while none of the other Jasons actually start with throwing knives, and they have to rely on finding them throughout the map. We really don't know how difficult it's going to be to find knives, and if you'll find one of at a time or a bunch at a time or just how that's going to work yet but it's going to be cool to see how hunter jason starting with these knives impacts his overall gameplay and play style the throwing knives definitely help counter all types of infinite loops that were present in this game as you can see when chad was hit with the throwing knife he stumbled and slowed down quite a bit and it's also definitely safe to assume that he's losing health over time and will eventually lose his ability to run should he stop to heal himself with a first aid or go ahead and take too many hits and lose his ability to run, the infinite loop is pretty much over. Problem solved. Some of you may have also noticed the extremely fast recovery on his shift ability, which is an extreme help in countering an infinite loop. But for those of you that missed it, I'm going to play it back. Just look how fast this ability recharges and is available again for use. Part 6 Jason is one of the three Jasons to have a buff to his shift cooldown. Part 9 Jason as well as the Tom Savini Jason have the same shift cooldown time and as you can tell from this video it comes back pretty quick, in about 10 seconds you're ready to use it again. Next up we have Jason's ability to break fences. 
I was really close to bringing you guys this information a while back, but then Jason's stats were revealed to us and that seemed quite a bit more important. But it's definitely got its place in this video. The two most common infinite loops that I came across in the beta were counselors running Jason around fences or counselors running Jason around large couches in the interiors of the cabins. While the throwing knives help with both cases, you won't always have them in inventory, so the breakable fences are an extremely useful addition. Now, it's definitely worth mentioning that only Jason can break the fences. Counselors can't break them with their weapons, and the car can't break the fences by driving into them. Not all fences are breakable, but the common wooden fence that we saw all throughout Higgins Haven can be broken by a swing of Jason's weapon. Jason can break the individual sections of a fence that you see in this image here. Here's before he breaks it, and here's after he broke the fence. Now counselors have much less fence to work with, and now Jason doesn't have to spend a lot of time running circles around large sections of fence or waiting for his shift to recharge so he can grab a counselor. Wes Keltner, who is the founder of Gun Media, which is the team that's working with Ilphonic to bring us this game, also mentioned that they may add a feature where if Jason is in rage mode, he can just walk through the sections of fence. Walking through the sections of fence with rage is not a feature that will be in the game at launch. And we may or may not see this feature later on. We first got to see how Jason breaking the sections of fence with his weapon changes the gameplay. Though it doesn't seem like this feature of Jason either smashing the fence with his weapon or raging through it will make a drastic change to gameplay. It just seems like a nice feature that sort of helps counter holdups in the gameplay and also like something that should have just originally been in the game. So it's great to see that we'll have this at launch. This next change is, in my opinion, one of the biggest changes to the gameplay since beta overall. I'm talking about the addition of traps that Jason will have to use on counselors. All of the playable Jasons will be starting with traps in their inventory that they can use on counselors. They can't find them throughout the map, and each Jason has a set amount of traps available to him. Part 2 Jason starts with the most. He has 6. Parts 3, 6, 8, and the Tom Savini Jason start with 4 traps. And finally, parts 7 and 9 Jason start with just 2 traps. While I definitely don't think the primary use of traps will be to help counter infinite loops, a Jason who finds themselves stuck chasing a counselor in an infinite loop can use traps that are in his inventory to help counter the problem, if they're available. The traps work similar to the bear traps that counselors have to use on Jason, but they're Jason's own version that he can use on the counselors. And given that infinite loops generally have a particular path that a counselor needs to follow, Jason can simply place one of his traps within that path and then the counselor can't go through it or they'll get trapped and most likely killed. Some players in the beta became extremely proficient at running Jason in infinite loops that involve their use of windows and cabins. Since Jason can't just climb through the windows himself, he would have to shift, morph, or run over to where a counselor exited or entered a window, and a lot of the time a counselor could get in or out of the cabin before he could do that, resulting in an infinite loop. Since Jason's traps can be placed in exterior locations like outside of a cabin, he can simply place it outside of the window or a window that's giving him trouble, and then really narrow down what a counselor is able to do to get away from him. And although I think traps should only be used as a last resort in solving an infinite loop, since they're really powerful when used elsewhere, it's great that this will potentially be an option, and it will be extremely satisfying to trap a counselor that was annoying you with an infinite loop in your trap and then take them out. Now the knives, breakable fences, and traps aren't the only counters to infinite loops in this game, as a lot of the mechanics themselves help prevent the problem in the first place. You have abilities like shift and morph that when used properly, that counselor's not going to be able to run you in circles. Some counselors also have slower speed or stamina that they rely on to keep infinite loops going, and that's not an infinite pool that they can keep drawing from. Even with the infinite loops that rely on windows, Jason can smash them, and every time a counselor jumps through that window, they're taking damage. They can't take damage forever and continue running. And while I already had a video on Jason's traps because that was a very significant change to the game, I never actually covered information on the throwing knives or breakable fences. It is relatively old information at this point, but I still hope it was helpful to some of you out there. And if none of the information was new to you guys, hopefully looking at the way these changes affect infinite loops made this video somewhat worth your time. Well that's it for this video, definitely be on the lookout for next week's, and if you haven't already, be sure to like the video and subscribe for future Friday the 13th content including daily uploads once the game is released. I'm going to leave you guys with the throwing knife clip from earlier, but this time it will have sound to it, so if you haven't seen it, you can watch it with some sound. It's really satisfying to see and hear Chad being run over by his fellow counselors. But until next time guys, thank you for watching the video. It started!